Uh, Congressman Auchincloss, thanks for joining us. Let me just get to a, an item that you're in the news for this week, your involvement with the CBS crew from uh, Stephen Colbert. Can you make that clear? Because your colleague, Rep. Jordan, is suggesting that you let that crew back in the Capitol building after it had been thrown out. Can you make that clear for me? Did you do that, or did someone from your staff let that crew back in the building? I had a scheduled interview with CBS that morning, uh, as did several other members of Congress after me. Uh, we certainly did not uh, let any crew into the building after hours and don't condone any inappropriate conduct. I think uh, Stephen Colbert cleared it up pretty well in his monologue. What was your involvement with Stephen Colbert? Just to, met that comedy crew, you did an interview, and then that was the last you saw. How did this notion that you let them back in the building or an aide who works for you let them back in the building? That's absolutely not true. Yeah, as, as I said, I had an interview that morning, as did many other members of Congress after me. And uh, mm -hmm. I think, frankly, what we're seeing is that Rep. Jordan and, and many others are so desperate to distract from the January 6th hearings that they're drawing uh, comparisons even where they are laughable on their face. Okay. All right. Uh, laughable. Uh, listen, I enjoy a good joke just like anybody else, and I watch the late night comedians. In retrospect, though, given that the Democrats are urging us to take what's going on in that committee room so seriously and the nature of what's going on in the country that we're all divided, it's a very serious time. Do you regret getting involved with that CBS comedy crew at all? Was that a mistake? Do I regret having an interview with CBS Press? No, that's a, an absurd question. Press are in the Capitol at all times. And in fact, a free press on the grounds of the People's House is an incredibly important part of democracy. And the January 6th hearings are highlighting just how fragile that democracy is. I'd like to talk about the economy. I'd like to talk about our democracy. I think uh, questions about a, a puppet on the loose in the Capitol are frankly uh, just <laughs> not germane right now. Well, Congressman, that may be what you want to talk about, and you call it CBS Press. You're in the news for this reason. I didn't put you in the news. Uh, it was a comedy crew from Stephen Colbert I'm asking you about, not CBS News, not Nora O'Donnell. Can you just take the last word on that? Do you regret getting yourself involved with a comedy crew from Stephen Colbert? Stephen Colbert has a wide reach and an engaged audience, and I'm going to go anywhere and everywhere to talk to people about the issues of the day using all means available to me, humor, uh, probity, whatever is appropriate. I, I, again, I think the idea that a, a member of Congress would be uh, regretful of talking to a member of the press about the issues of the day just at face value doesn't fly. Now, if you want to talk about the economy, if you want to talk about the January 6th hearings, if you want to talk about inflation, happy to take those on. I think we've had enough of the puppet, though. Well, I'll do an interview. I'll, I'll get to all of those topics. But so you're saying see, uh, Colbert is a member of the press? Some may, some may disagree. And I'll move on, but you can see the fine distinction we're making. Go ahead, Congressman. Congressman. I, I think you already gave me the last word on this. I think I've been very clear. Okay. All right. So you gave the interview to Stephen Colbert, and you're satisfied with that. Let's move on to other things. Uh, today, the president is calling for a, a reduction in the federal gasoline tax, and he's urging the governors across the 50 states to do the same. Your governor, Governor Baker, and your legislature has not seen fit to do that. Should they lower the gas tax in Massachusetts, suspend it at least? Well, we need to provide relief for Americans at the pump, and that's why I voted in favor of legislation that would go after profiteering and price gouging by big oil companies. The federal gas tax is such a broken system that I have questions, as I know many of my colleagues do, about whether it's the right vehicle to do that for. In some respects, the gas tax is both too low and that it's totally unable to meet the actual funding needs for a highway system, and in some respects it's too high and that it's regressive in which Americans it actually, uh, it actually most affects. So I've got questions about the right uh, next steps and whether this is the appropriate way to do it, but we clearly need to get relief for Americans, and uh, we've already taken measures in the House to do so. Okay, so when the president says suspend the federal gasoline tax, you're not crazy about that. And as far as Charlie Baker goes, not suspending the state tax, you're okay with that. Am I reading you right on these two issues? Well, I'm going to let Charlie Baker and state reps and state senators handle state policy. I'm focused on federal policy here in Washington. The president just made this announcement. 
And I know Democrats in, in both chambers are, are still exploring whether the federal gas tax is the appropriate mechanism. We know we need to get relief. We have gone after big oil for price gouging. Uh, but the federal gas tax is, is really a foundationally broken system, and it may not be the right vehicle for, uh, for getting relief at the pump. Now, with regard to inflation, the president says inflation is not inevitable. Larry Summers, who used to be the Treasury Secretary, pretty much says it's, we're going into recession at some point. What do you believe? I know you've studied economics. What do you believe with regard to whether it's recession is inevitable or not? I've, I've been in politics and I've studied enough economics to know that nothing is inevitable. Anybody who looks into their own crystal ball and guarantees what's going to happen, uh, I think, is out over their skis. Uh, what I will say is that we know that higher prices are uh, causing real pain for Americans and for my own constituents. Um, and last year, as vice chair of the Financial Services Committee, I put forward a series of proposals that could be adopted by both Republicans and Democrats to help alleviate shortages and reduce prices, including investments in workforce development. Since that time, all I've heard from my colleagues on the other side of the aisle is a focus, indeed some might say a manic obsession, with guns and with taking away a woman's right to abortion. Guns and abortion is what they want to talk about. I don't hear any solutions coming about inflation, although they certainly want to pin it at every opportunity on this president alone. All right. Is the Fed right to raise interest rates to try to tamp down inflation? Do you believe with that formula that that will work? I'm not going to comment on individual rate increase decisions by the Fed. The Fed's an independent governmental body, and I think their autonomy is critical for the healthy functioning of our government. I will say, and I right. did say more than a year ago, that for 10 years we've had an era of easy money in this country. It has done better for Wall Street than for Main Street, and that a tightening uh, after 10 years of easy money would be appropriate, and it seems that the Fed is, is acting with a sense of urgency now. All right, let's go to, well, you brought it up, a woman's right to choose or a woman's right to have an abortion just across the street. The barricades have gone up. Uh, you obviously are going to disagree with that Supreme Court decision. Should it mirror, should it mirror the leak? Uh, it would send it back to the states. And some might say, well, that's the way the system was designed, state rights. You would say what? What's wrong with sending it back to the states? Because in Massachusetts, you've already codified it. For the first time in my lifetime, the Supreme Court is taking away a right instead of granting a new one. And a supermajority of Americans disagree with it. A majority of Americans want abortion to be legal, not just within their home state, but uh, as a nation. Because as a nation, we consecrate fundamental rights. One of them is a woman's right to make her own decisions about her body and her life. From state to state, though, we do different things. For example, uh, Massachusetts allows for driver's licenses for illegal immigrants. Oh, they will very soon. Rhode Island will do that at some point. Other states don't. Isn't that a way to look at it? Well, a lot of, there's a few things or maybe a handful of things that states do differ on, and this might be one of them. Again, what's fundamentally wrong with that? There is a healthy tradition in this country of states being the laboratories of democracy, and I certainly, as a former city council, uh, love the idea of experimentation and innovation at the local level and of states taking on uh, hard problems and, and being test beds in which they can be solved nationally. Uh, the right for a woman to make her own decisions about her body, her medical care, and her life is not a decision that we uh, accept as something that to be experimented with or, um, or obviated by different states. This is a fundamental right that should be consecrated at the national level. With regard to guns, gun rights, and, and the, the gun control argument with station, the nation finds ourselves in, there was action on the House side that's much stronger than what's going on in the Senate. If we pass this Senate action that's coming in, is that the best we can do? Is it part of compromise? Is that the way politics works? You're not getting everything, but you're getting something. What would you say to that? Is that a good thing? Republicans came together with Democrats to pass incremental common sense measures for gun safety that will save lives. I'm going to vote for it in the House. And then I'm going to continue fighting for uh, an assault weapons ban for red flag laws and background checks that are more rigorous because we know from our experience here in Massachusetts that these save tens of thousands of lives every year and they would save hundreds of thousands nationally every year. These measures are supported by a majority of Republicans, they're supported by a majority of Democrats, and they're supported by a majority of gun owners. And it's really uh, the NRA and its craven hold over the GOP that has uh, prevented this common sense legislation from passing and that 
is allowing children to continue to be slaughtered. Uh, this bill is an important first step. It is not the last. Uh, and just a final question back to your building in the January 6th uh, hearings that are going on. Uh, they appear to be leading, some might say, toward a recommendation that the attorney general file criminal charges against former President Trump. I just heard uh, former U.S. attorney Ackerman on CNN before I began interviewing you. He said, oh, there's absolute evidence that the former president committed the crime. Absolutely. Sheldon Whitehouse, the senator in Rhode Island, said it's a very dicey thing for one party or a new administration to go after the former president of another party. It sort of sets up a tit for tat. What do you think about that reasoning, that it's a risky thing for one administration to prosecute a former president? Uh, if the premise here is that our norms and institutions as our democracy are under threat, unfortunately, I wholeheartedly agree. And that is the legacy of the Trump administration, is that the, the norms that we hold dear as a democracy, like peaceful transfer of power, uh, were trampled upon. The corruption was so endemic that it has left real scars on the way we function. And nothing as a citizen about what we have to do in the January 6th committee makes me happy. Uh, but as a member of Congress, it is clearly necessary. We have got to bring uh, transparency and accountability both for this generation of Americans and for posterity. And we need to hold those to account who threaten to undermine the most important feature of our republic, which is that we concede defeat when we lose an election. So then let the chips fall where they may. If it leads to criminal charges and a recommendation to prosecute former President Trump, you're fine with that. And this will be the last question. The January 6th committee right now is focused on laying out the fact pattern, both of the days and weeks leading up to January 6th, as well as that day itself. And then there is going to be uh, subsequent recommendations for uh, both how we prevent this from happening in the future and how we hold those to account who are responsible for it. And uh, I'm going to wait for the full fact pattern to be, to be laid out. Um, but from what we've seen so far, uh, just it, it, it is absolutely uh, evident that Donald Trump was personally involved in trying to overturn the election results. Congressman Jake Auchincloss, Democrat, Massachusetts, thanks for joining me. Appreciate it.